Okay, everybody. It's finally come down to it. My my channel of running pop culture has avoided this for a while. And it's not because I haven't been wanting to do it. It's because uh, I've just had a lot of stuff on there. But uh, but we've finally gotten to Uzaki-chan. <laughs> and to tell you all the truth, I like Uzaki-chan. <laughs> I like Uzaki-chan a lot. Uh, the character first come out, it was cute. It was somewhat of an adorable little Asian chick. And then later on you find out, oh, you know, she's like 19. And then she gets, I can't remember what the reasoning was behind it. I know that Azaki-chan did not start as a manga. She started as a mascot for something. I can't remember what it is. I may have seen it. I, I saw the character while back. It's like, oh man, you know, that's actually a, a pretty interesting character. And then now, now Azaki-chan has her own manga and her own show. And she's kind of just been beloved by anime and manga fans. They've just kind of latched onto her. And as someone who likes anime and manga, I, I do like, I've got some, I've got some mangas at my house. I've, I've watched some anime. It's not normie kind of stuff. I do binge watch an anime when I find one that I really, really like. Currently, I'm trying to catch up on Seven Deadly Sins. The problem is I live with a woman who is Asian and she likes seven, she likes anime as well. Any anime I like, she likes. The problem is she's not off work enough for me to just straight up binge watch. And if I watch it without her, she gets pissed off and I get in the doghouse. So I, I binge watch, I, I watch a complete series, but I have to wait on her <laughs> because Hey, you know what? It's, it's more fun. Anime is more fun with, with other people, especially, you know, loved ones. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But anyway, Ozaki Chan is, is now being used, and you're seeing this in anime now, which is what I like to call the Hawkeye Initiative 2.0. For those who don't know what the Hawkeye Initiative is, the Hawkeye Initiative was a... It was a... Basically an assault on artists within Western comics uh, intended to shame them into not drawing sexualized characters. If you look at Marvel now... There is not a single woman in Marvel and many in DC that have that have any attractive poses to them whatsoever. You don't see that anymore. You see very bland, very cardboardy, very stiff and wooden poses and movement out of these characters. They're not dynamic anymore. Uh, and one of the things you got to remember is with a woman, uh, confidence is what makes them sexy. When you take away a woman's sexuality, when you take away the sexiness on a woman or make a woman less sexy, you have to make her look less confident. This is just biology, okay? Men are looking for the best to or looking for the best woman and confidence posing the way a woman carries herself that plays into that biologically. Men notice this. You can have a chick with gigantic tips, tits and a small waist if she's slumped over walking around like a hobo half the time. Yeah, no guy's going to look at that. <laughs> okay? But you have her walk through there swaying her hips, shoulders thrown back, chest out, nose up, proud and loud the entire time going through. You know, again, body language wise, every man in the room notices her. This is actually a scientific thing that was found out that some women will actually modify their walk and their poses slightly to a point naturally most women don't realize they do this and they will do this naturally and it will men will catch on to it it's been observed and scientifically proven so but you have uzaki jam and the point of um with the uh like i said the way they did this with um the hawkeye initiative was they would go in and they would basically take female pictures such as uh, there's a famous one with spider woman where she's upside down on a wall and her butt's kind of pointed up to the top of the page. And it, you know, it creates a really nice little ass up there. What they would do is they would take that photo or take that picture, they would trace it, and then they would fill the details in as supposed to be Hawkeye. And a lot of times this was done very poorly. Sometimes it, it ended up looking like gender bender Hawkeye or, or just a really thin version of Hawkeye. I don't know why they picked Hawkeye for this, but it apparently had the effect that they wanted. It shamed Marvel artists and DC artists to the point where they stopped drawing women sexually. And like I said, sexuality of women 
that shows an air of confidence is how you make a woman sexy a lot of times. You make you give them if you don't believe me, look at BBW porn. Okay. Don't ask me how I know about that. Just look it up. Those women, they're fat, they're confident. It can t- confidence can take a woman who's a three or a four and bring her up to about a six or a seven. No lie, it can do it. But with Ozaki Chan, we're doing basically Hawkeye Initiative 2.0. And what's happening here is they're taking Uzaki Chan, who they're right now claiming is pedophilia to look at Uzaki because they're saying she looks pubescent. When in reality, most Asian women are they they just don't age as quickly physically. They they age mentally about the same speed as every other woman, but they don't age physically as fast. Uh, I live with a Filipino. Okay, she looks like she's twenty one. She's thirty. Okay, automatically with an Asian, if you see an Asian woman, you should automatically assume she is 10 years older than what she looks. That's, it's just a thing with Asian women. You, you cannot, you cannot judge their age by their simple looks. What they do is they take this and then we downgrade it and they say, look, we fixed it. She looks older. Now she looks like something out of Disney and Pixar and thus it is a downgrade. When you go back, go back to this. Okay. Regular anime is awesome. And the problem is, this is just, it's cultural colonialism. Okay? You have these cultural colonists who go into um, fandoms like this, like anime, and they say they fix it. You see this crap a lot with these morons. Where they go in, they'll take a cute character or something like that now, and they're they're trying to change it up and make, you know, the, like right here. You've got two characters in anime. Don't know what these anime are. And we're taking these characters from light skin, which most Japanese people are light skinned. This comes from Japan. And we are putting, we're basically whitewashing. Same thing as whitewashing now. <laughs> okay. Like you take taking Egyptian, Egyptian history and putting a white chick in there. This is the same thing. We're, we're race swapping the character. We are then also putting on what we believe is the ideal woman on there, uh, the, the ideal body type of these SJWs, and trying to force it down the throats of everyone else by saying, oh, look, we fixed your anime. Aren't you so proud of us? I don't know why I have two of these on here. But this has been the, the point of this nonsense, is to try and either shame people or make them embarrassed of drawing good anime chicks. Personally, right now, it's stupid, okay? Because you don't, you're not respecting the medium, number one. You're bringing your Western white guilt ideology into a culture that is not white and has its own entire unique culture. You have to remember, Japan is an island. Most of Japan's culture is done through isolation. That's how we got to here. That isolationism created a whole unique culture to itself, free of most influences. We're seeing a culture that spent most of its time isolated from most of the world, now being influenced by things outside its, outside its realm, and it's adapting fairly well. It's the amazing resilience of the Japanese people and Japanese culture. It's, it's quite resilient in what has happened. And I would state that Japan's kind of, and this is true in a lot of statements, because if you look at Tokyo, I was about to make this point, but then I realized Tokyo kind of, kind of mirrors this. The one thing that's said about Tokyo is that Tokyo is a, a mixture of modern and ancient culture. Uh, you still got these older Japanese style houses from the what is it, the 12th, 13th, and 16th centuries Japan, but then you've got all this modern stuff coming in. You've got this ancient culture fluidly mixing in perfectly, in perfect balance with modern culture. And it's it's a modern and ancient culture. It's beautiful to look at. It's amazing because sometimes you look at a lot of our cultures, a lot of our cultures have forgotten the ancient uh, traditions of our forefathers. A lot of things have changed now, uh, as I said. <laughs> but anyway... But now you have these idiots from the West coming in wanting to wanting to what they claim is fixing it. Oh, we're going to fix your culture. 
because you're all a bunch of savages. All the Japanese are savages. And we've got to come in here and we've got to fix them. We've got to make them shun their religion by shaming them and browbeating them. And make them eat our food. And make them eat with forks and utensils instead of chopsticks. It, this, is the, this is racism. This is racism, colonialism, pure sexism also to, to assume that most of this is all, you know, just fat material. Um, no, it's not. Okay. I can tell you something else. The one thing that I have learned about feminists before feminists got interested in anime and manga, you, I could be in, you know, a lot of times my mom later in her life, she ended up after, after we got through school and everything and I graduated she would have me drive her up to college, up to one of the largest college towns. She'd have to do a four-year degree. And I would drive her back home because I wouldn't be going through the class. I could nap outside. I had a driver's license. I could drive her back home and she could sleep on the way home. One of the things I would do is I would take one of my mangas up there with me and read it. And you know what you get from the blue-haired weirdos? Back then, that was in the 90s, mind you. In the 90s, they said, oh, this is just cartoon porn. What are you doing? Is that manga? That's just cartoon porn. That's all. It's cartoon porn. No. It's a different culture. Okay? You're not culturally enriched enough to understand that. But, I mean, you... Like I said, there's this constant push by these idiots now because they've recognized that anime and manga is popular. And like everything else they do, just like with D&D, Terminator, Star Wars, Star Trek, video games, um, Marvel, DC, television, cartoons, these idiots go in there and they take anything that has influence as entertainment and then they shift it to propaganda because they want everything to reflect their values, but they can't accept anyone else's values. And this is what I would call pure evil. Because if you can't find beauty in someone else's culture to the point where you're going to just throw on there some arbitrary bullcrap, then I would state that you are developmentally challenged. Because, as I said, it is not your culture. It is someone else's culture, and you should respect it. Like I said before this is over with, Japan does not allow child porn in their country. All right, if you had a problem with this, you would go talk to someone about it over there. Uh, They don't allow any child, any CP. And Uzaki-chan is, in the deal, she is the right age. Okay? It doesn't matter. Hey, your your mentality, your your maturity is not based on your physical traits. And that's the problem with these people. Because in doing this, they also allow their mask to slip. They view people on their outward appearance. They want to see you as uh, you should be outwardly trans. Uh, we, we can, we, they want all this stuff outwardly. They want to judge you based on your skin color and sexuality on your phys- outward appearance. Before they will judge you on what your inward appearance. They don't judge you on character. Because they want to judge everybody on the outside. Not on the inside. That's how they make their determination of your value. If you think about it, it, they are basically every monster that they claim they are fighting against. Nobody really cares about race. I don't care about race. I don't care about gay people. If they want to go fuck inside of a home, if you can find another consenting adult of the same sex, go right ahead and fuck till the monkeys come home. I don't care. All right? But when you're sitting up here getting on to me because I'm supposedly not dropping everything I'm doing and doing everything I can to push your agenda, uh, no, we have a problem there. I can, I can actually show respect to something by not actively going out and destroying it. Unlike these idiots who have to go out and actively show their discrimination by destroying everything. And 
this just shows their lack of creativity because if these if this was really good okay oh never mind <laughs> that 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 there is something i have gotten for later <laughs> so sjw's beware if if this shit here if this shit was really fixing it and making it better you should be able to make a character similar to this and sell it and kick the shit out of Uzaki chan the problem is, Uzaki Chain is more powerful than your Tumblr fan art. All right, and at the end of the day, people people want this. They don't want this. This is better, and honestly, this is a better representation of culture. Anyway, folks, I'm the Last Raider. Tell me what you think about this in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe. And hit the bell for notification. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys next time.